all 60 Fall Guys maps, tips, and tricks from Season 1 2020 to Season 6. Dizzy Heights. Here's a way to blaze through the spinning discs at the start. Make your way to the second spinning disc from the left and just walk on the edges of the discs. There is no gap, so you can just walk in between the discs. This is much faster than just using the discs normally. If you do get a bad spawn, however, you can still do this strut. All you have to do is make your way to the second disc from the left. However, everyone does this now. It's not a new strat. Is this still possible to do as of Season 6 Star 3? Yes, it is. What you do is you run while jumping or sprint jump instead of running. If you're in the lead, you can do a combination of both or you could just walk on the discs like normal. You can also still dive under the balls. Just make sure to dive well before the ball is about to hit you. If you get the variant with no discs in the middle, just drop down. Instead of just trying to hop on the center column, it's much faster if you drop down and make your way across. And as for the Yetus, I prefer to take the Yetus from the side. Wait until the Yetus is in the 12 o'clock position or it's in the very top, then jump and it should hit you. However, if you get this variant with the spinning bar in the middle along with the spinning discs, jump dive to the spinning discs on the side and stay on the edges of it. The bar won't be able to hit you that way. Hit parade. Fall down into the slime slope. It's faster than taking the beams. You can ragdoll however upon landing. So what I do is, is I slightly move my character and by the time I land down, I usually don't ragdoll. If we're in the lead, you can actually sidestep the turnstiles without ever needing to move it. If however, you do get the variant with the batons, let the batons hit you forwards by following the direction in which it's going to go. If you're far away and the wall right in front of you is open, by the time you'll get there, it will be closed. If you get the hammers towards the end, go with the flow of the hammers or go in the direction which the hammer is moving towards. And if you do that, the hammers will actually be able to hit you forwards rather than backwards. Door dash. Stay slightly behind and let people go for the doors instead. If you get the spinning disc variant, use the discs to lunge yourself forwards. And as for the Yetus, just go from the sides and jump when the Yetus is facing the 9 o'clock position. Gate crash. Walk to the gates that are still up and by the time you'll reach them, it will be down. If you do get the conveyor belt variant, use the belts to boost you forwards. And generally, just get into the habit of going to gates that are closed, but only do this if you're kind of far away from the gates. When you reach the third section, these gates have different timings compared to the other gates. So I recommend slowing down and going through them when you see the opportunity to do so. As for the Yetus, I recommend going underneath it due to the fact that you're on a slope. Run directly into it and jumping when it reaches the 12 o'clock position. You can also get yeeted by going to the side of it, but just make sure that you're in front of the Yetus at the end of the day and the same timing applies. Fruit shoot. If you get the variant with the Yetus, which is the main variant, go for it. All you have to do is wait for the Yetus to be in the 9 o'clock position, you jump and you should get yeeted. This yeetus is almost a necessity to winning, so I recommend you learn how to take it. Regardless of what variant of fruit shoot you get, staying on the sides and jumping in front of you when you reach the pink bumper is something that everyone should be doing. The reason you jump dive or jump in front of the bumper is so that when a fruit or an obstacle hits you, the bumper is there to catch your fall. This is more for when you get the variant without the yeetus, but try to go on the sides, but don't go to the extreme sides just yet. Wait up and see if a fruit or an obstacle is about to hit you and then try to swore of your way out of the way. Block party. You can't talk about block party without mentioning its better variant, parkour party. You don't actually have to get on the staircase. You can stay on the ground floor for the majority of the game. Up until the final few seconds, of course. However, I recommend you get on the staircase anyways and while up top, you sprint jump or run while jumping because you could potentially get caught on the divot and your character will just stop moving. When you see some incoming pieces, you can actually dive jump onto them. You'll be really surprised by how far you can jump dive with the right amount of momentum. For the final second, there are two variants, one where you have to jump dive onto the other block and if you fall down, you will get shoved in the slime and another one where you go back to the platform and another staircase will appear. Just sprint jump and dive onto the oncoming block as soon as possible. If you see small sections of blocks, you can just run on them and then jump onto the other small pieces. Perfect match. While on the topic of variants that are more challenging than its regular counterpart, perfect death match. If you go on one of the corner tiles and stand almost at the very edge, the pink bar won't be able to reach you. However, you do need to be careful because people could try and push you off. But this is a way of avoiding the bar if need be. I would recommend standing on one spot and jumping around while trying to memorize the tiles surrounding you. You can actually get on the head of the baton by running and jumping on top of it. You will need to push your movement stick forwards so you don't fall off the head. Take some time to practice this and you'll understand it in no time. Seesaw. Depending on the variation at the start, you'll either have three seesaws all lined up or six seesaws. If you do get the three seesaws at the start, I would recommend 
moment you try and break away from the crowd. If you do, you will have the seesaws all to your own, making this map incredibly easy to qualify on. However, if you do get the advantage with the six seesaws at the start, the second section is where you will have a chance to break away from the crowd. Like in big fans, if you tag the checkpoint and fall down, you will have a chance to spawn at the very front. This technique is known as death warping by some. While on the seesaw, you can actually jump dive on top of the yellow fence and then run on it. As for the Yetus, the best way to do this is to be directly in front of it and when it reaches the top or at the 12 o'clock position, that's when you jump and with any luck, you should get yeeted. You can run and jump dive on top of this fence and while holding forwards, jump dive onto the other side. Slime climb. To do bumper skip, jump towards the bumper and while in midair, keep mashing your jump button and by the time you land, you should be boosted in the air. Jump on the small ledge next to the yellow fence, walk to the left and jump right when you're about to reach this head portion. If you get the blizzard fan variant, let the fan come to you and right when it's about to hit you, jump and you should be blown in the air. If however you get the low gravity variant while on the conveyor belt, go inside the low gravity section, use this shadow as a reference and then jump on top of the beam and then again jump onto the other side. Here's how to do the yeet skip with ease. Position your character almost to the very end of the green stripe right around here. This is so you're directly in front of the yeetus and once the yeetus has reached near the 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock position, you jump while holding forwards slightly and you'll get yeeted. Once I learned where to stand and how to position myself, that's when I was able to get yeeted consistently. If instead you get the low gravity variant with the discs towards the end, you don't have to drop down and get on the disc. You can actually just jump into the low gravity section. Also, if you get the thick bonkers section towards the end, get on the blue stripes and the bonkers won't even graze you. This also applies for the hammers. However, don't do this when you get the bollards or the donuts because the bollards could actually knock you off. Only get on the blue stripes for the bonkers or the hammers. If you get the blizzard fan, however, wait for the fan to come towards you or away from the finish line and then run on the side where the fan is. Also, make sure to hold forwards and left. Oh yeah, and you can also jump dive over this corner as well. Tail tag, last 30 seconds matter the most really. Make sure you turn on names so you can see people through walls and beneath you as well. Mainly, take the time to practice parkouring. You can run and jump across the platforms. You don't need to jump dive like people would have you believe. Running and jumping are plenty enough to reach it. You can also use this to cut people off and steal the tails when they least expect it. Moreover, you can also do the same thing while on the small yellow fences. When you have someone chasing you, try to be unpredictable. Turn around, jump over them, get on the ramp or jump off the ramp, and if you do get the Yetus variant, use the Yetus as a way to escape. And occasionally go to the middle as well and just use the middle as a way to escape as well. The worthy gig. Newbies will use the treadmills and go for the blocks. However, you can just run on the treadmill and jump dive directly on the platform. To pass a thick bonkers section every time, walk directly in between the first two bonkers and as for the last one, follow it and once it goes to the other side, you cross it. The middle path is easy once you know the timing of it. Walk on the edges of the incline and once you're about to reach the top, you dive. You should be laying flat by the time the conveyor belt straightens out. If the blade hits you, it won't fling you off. If however you don't want to do the conveyor belt section, you can still get to the middle platform from the sides. Just run to the edge and then you can jump dive onto the middle section. You can do it from both sides, it doesn't matter what side you go from. Tiptoe. If a thick bonkers is about to hit you, you can dive right before it does and you should be fine. Let others go depending on where everyone is, but at the beginning, you can actually try and find the tiles for yourself. If you fail, there isn't much consequences. Sometimes the game will give you two paths, but one of them is a dead end, so keep an eye out for keen players who may have found the real path. If a tile in front of you is shaking, you know that tile is fake and you can proceed on to the next one in line. Jump Club. I'll sometimes pan my camera to the top left so that I'm able to keep an eye out on multiple batons at the same time. Depending on the speed in which the baton is going, I'll run towards it and then just jump over it. At the start, I would say to run away from the bar, but as the bar starts to speed up, you pan your camera in front of you so you can see where it is and then run towards it. The meta these days is to grab people and let the bar shove them into the slime, so be careful of that. This will typically happen in the three bar variant. They will typically grab you when the bar is moving fast and is near. Hoarders. Just pray you get good teammates. This map is about trying to be at least second place. The top two teams always qualify. Always make sure you at least have one or two people dedicated to defending, as well as try to grab people who may try to steal your balls. Typically, I'll stand around this corner and try to hit the ball back into the wall. Always be flexible and change positions from attacker to defender at the drop of a dime. Egg scramble. At the start of the game, if you spawn in front, just grab eggs and throw them behind you. One or two people should stay behind and throw the eggs into the basket. Just keep chucking eggs to your teammates. This teamwork will help you set the foundation for the rest of your game. If you're in the lead or in second place, go to the 
team that has the least amount of points and take their eggs. Best way to throw eggs is to jump dive and let go of your grab. If you have an egg in your hands and someone is about to grab you, try dropping the egg and picking it up again. You can also do this in maps like Power Trip as well. Always have one or two people preferably defending the nest and if you have the golden egg, make sure they're holding on to it for dear life. Fall Ball Learning to play multiple roles such as the attacker, defender and midfielder will greatly help you in qualify on this map. This is one of those maps where being on voice comms really can benefit you. How you hit the ball is that you run towards the ball and dive. Ball hits aren't that consistent so sometimes it could go 3 inches, sometimes it could go 45 inches. So your ping really matters a lot. Having two defenders is a necessity to winning. One defender for each side. Grab people who try to go for your ball, it may give your defender a chance to hit the ball away. Don't forget you can also travel with the ball so go on the sides and walk with your ball and always be ready to switch positions on the drop of a hat. If you get the variant with the spinning disc in the middle and the ball won't be headed in your direction, let your teammate or the other team get to it and get ready to counter. Team Tail Tag If someone is chasing behind you, go up the ramp and slide down the slime slope and just keep doing that over and over. People often don't know how to counter it. You then can move forwards or wherever you want to really. If you're at the top section and near the incline, you can jump dive on top of the platform by using the incline. Use the middle section to bob and weave. Also, never chase one person for too long if you're not able to get their tail, move on to someone else. Jinxed Grabbing others so your teammate can jinx them is a habit everyone should develop, even myself because I don't do it nearly enough. If you get the variant with a blizzard fan, you can actually run and jump on the sides of the fan. A big tip I can give you is to never try to chase someone if you're super behind them because you're moving nearly at the same speed as them and you might never catch them. Instead, try to cut them off or hope that one of your teammates is positioned well and grabs them. And also, you can stand in the center of the spinning disc and you'll just stand still. Try and juke players by using the environment around you. And if anything, try to get jinxed yourselves on purpose and try to catch people. You may never know, you may actually play better jinxed than you are as the civilian. Rock and roll. I always try and push the ball at the wall rather than the center, especially if you get the bollards at the start. If the ball gets hit by the bollard, it'll actually go flying backwards. If you push the ball to the right side, you will then need to position yourself to the very right and push it to the left. Once the ball is at about 40%, that's when I recommend you go down and try to stop the other team's ball. Everyone needs to be pushing before that. If someone is trying to stop your ball from moving, just grab them and if you get the bollard variant at the end, the bollard or donuts can actually help you push your ball forwards. Going and stopping the other team's ball is an exercise I recommend everyone try to do frequently. Hoopsie daisy. I recommend staying on one side and just hanging around the disc. If you see that most of your team is on one side, you can then move to another. By splitting up, you cover more ground and never go for a ring that has someone near it. Learning when to pick your battles will help you greatly. But don't just stay on the disc, do move around your side, go to the incline and get the rings there or go to the center as well. Use the spinning disc as a center as a way to boost you forwards and then jump dive for the ring. Rollout As of season 6.3, grabbing people and shoving them into the small gap is much harder to do but it's still possible. If they're near a gap, just grab them and once the gap is about to approach them, let go and they should fall down. In general, just don't be one place for too long, either walk to another ring or you can sprint jump. Use the walls as a shield if you happen to get the fruit cannon variant. Royal Fumble Only the last 40 or so seconds matter in this map. Take your time to parkour around the map and stay up top so you can keep an eye out for the tail. Stand in the middle of the big spinning disc and you'll just stay in place. If you try and chase behind someone, you'll never be able to catch up to them unless they mess up somehow. Instead, try and cut them off by jumping on top of the ramp from the side. If you happen to have a tail, drop down if you see people chasing. Be careful when going for the small discs because people will already know that you're there and will already be there. Use the discs to propel you to the ramp. An underrated juking strat I don't see enough people do is jump on top of this blue circular thing and go around it. In general, learning to be nimble and agile will really aid you in winning on this map. Jump Showdown The meta for this map as of season 6.3 is to tap grab people and get them eliminated. You tap grab people by quickly grabbing them as the lower beam is about to hit them and quickly let go so you don't get hit either. The best time to tap grab people is when there are two tiles remaining. However, once the bar starts to spin really fast, you won't be able to tap grab them safely so only really do it a little bit after the third tile has fallen. Stay on the right side so that if you need to move to the left side, you're able to. And just keep an eye out on the upper beam. Once you see that it starts to cast a shadow on the tiles, that's when you cross to the right side. What I sometimes will do is I will count how many times I've jumped over the lower beam before I have to cross the upper beam. Typically in late game, it's five to six jumps. Knowing when to cross the shadow was when I learned how to time out this map frequently. By staying near the right and keeping an eye out on the upper beam, however, if you master tap grabbing, you can finish the game well before the bar starts moving at lightning speed. If you're on a tile that is about to fall down, you could jump on the right side of the 
lower beam and use it as a way to get to another tile. This technique is called pole jumping or bar jumping. And this is incredibly difficult to do, but it's great to do as a last resort. Jump on the very right side of the bar and keep jumping while slightly holding forwards and backwards. I have done this successfully only once. You're probably going to die anyway, so why not give it a shot, eh? Hexagon. As of season 6.3, you only get this map when you have 10 or more people. So this map really devolves into running around like a blindfolded toddler on the sugar rush. You can try to play it slow, but you're at a disadvantage if you do so. However, there are times where playing solo can actually help you greatly. Since everyone is running around, they often forget to check behind them. You'll be surprised by how much tiles that are left over, so definitely get into the habit of checking behind you. As well as sprint and jump, so you leave some tiles behind you for whenever you need it. A technique that's still widely used is called slow diving. It's where you jump while moving your movement stick slightly forwards and diving right when you're about to land on the next tile. This will take some time to get down, but just remember to not push your movement sticks too far forwards, otherwise you'll land on two tiles. Slow diving is a great way of conserving tiles and also slows you down slightly, giving you more time. Looking at where others will be and being able to predict what their next set of moves will be is a skill that pros constantly use. This skill combined with cutting people off will take your gameplay to new heights. Instead of going in a straight line, try to conserve your tiles by jumping to tiles on the side, zigzag around, and generally use all the tiles surrounding you, those in front of you, to the side, and behind you as well. Do be careful about going to the edges because people could try and cut you off. Also, try to jump dive if you see a tile in the distance. You'll be surprised by how far you can dive. Grabbing people is a technique that I don't really see people utilize in hexagon that much. Just get right behind someone or to the side preferably, grab them for a couple seconds and then let go so you don't fall down with them. But really, it's all about looking ahead, taking it slow, and utilizing all the tiles surrounding you and also just make sure to check behind you. Fall Mountain. Around season 6, they buffed the Yidis, which changed the way the Yidis works now. Here's how to do it. You stand directly in front of the Yidis and right when it's about to reach the 12 o'clock position, you jump and it should ye too. I'll play it again for you. You jump right when it's crossed the 12 o'clock region. Most people these days really jump too late, but follow the Yidis and if anything, jump when the Yidis is facing away from you. If you've taken the Yidis from the right side, move your character to the left side while in midair and do the opposite if you've taken the Yidis from the left side. If however you don't get the Yidis, here's a shortcut you can do. You can skip this corner by lining yourself up with this thing, run and then jump on top of it. This is quite tricky to do, but the key is to position yourself correctly and jump with enough momentum. And also out of season 6.3, if you get the advantage with the flippers, this flipper right here will actually always flip you forwards. Night Fever. The spawn Yidis is incredibly easy to take. Once you see the head in the downward phase position, that's when you jump towards it while holding forwards. You could even jump when you see the head of the Yidis in the 12 o'clock position as well. For the Blizzard fan variant, make sure you dive so you land faster and don't ragdoll upon landing. However, if you get the seesaw variant, you can either jump on top of the platform or you can climb the ledge and pull yourself up. And as for the secondary Yidis, you wait for the Yidis to cross the 12 o'clock position, then jump towards it. Position yourself a little bit away from the Yidis. To cross the thick bonkers section, I recommend being directly in front of the bonkers, waiting for it to move, and then proceed to cross. Go with the flow instead of resisting it. However, you could also go through the gap, but the bonkers could knock you off or stun you. For the drawbridge section, if you get the axe in the middle, wait for both bridges to almost touch each other, then dive. But you could also jump through the gap. I personally just dive through the gap instead. Big fans. If you spawn at the back, let everyone else go and then proceed onto a blade that is mostly uncontested. There are different sized fans. However, a quick way to cross all of them is to jump onto the center portion. There are different ways to go about this depending on the size of the fan. For the regular size ones, you jump onto the pole, sprint, and then proceed to jump onto the other side's pole. You essentially do the same thing for the largest fan. And as for the smallest fan, you just jump dive over the center. What speedrunners will do is that they will tag the checkpoint but fall. They do this because they may have a chance of being spawned all the way to their front. This is faster than just hitting the checkpoint and walking all the way to their front. This technique is commonly referred to as death warping by some. Spawning in the front isn't always guaranteed, but it's still worth trying. And as of season 6.3, this still works. Looking ahead to see the possible paths is an incredible skill to have. I definitely recommend going to the small fan located at the edges because people don't often take them. Learning to look ahead of you and seeing when two separate fans will meet is a great skill to have. This combined with walking on the center of a fan will make you almost unstoppable. If you do get the variant with the blizzard fans, use the fans to blow you upwards and then dive so you land faster and safely. At the final section, the left side is the preferred side to take because it's a little bit faster than taking the right 
outside. I rarely see people jump diving from one fan to another. It's definitely doable, so give that a try. Death warping along with going to the center are two things I think any beginner should try. Tulpsy Legends Don't waste time for a ring that you know you have no chance of getting. Tunnel visioning on rings is how people lose on this map. Did you know you can actually run and jump dive directly on top of this platform from the sides? And as of season 6 or 3, you are still able to jump on the purple block in the center and get on the drawbridges, but you can only do so when the drawbridges is down. Jump diving doesn't work, or at least it doesn't work anymore, so just jump on the block and you should be able to get on the bridge when it's down. I personally don't recommend staying in the center because it's the most contested area. If anything, stay on the edges and go to the center once in a while to get a ring or two. Constantly moving and knowing when to go for a ring and when not to is how you qualify on this map. Egg Siege The first few seconds matter a lot because if you're in last place, the opposing teams will go to your nest and try to steal your eggs. While on the drawbridge, jump dive and let go of your egg so it goes into your basket fast. However, if you're on the ground floor while holding an egg, you can run into the corner closest to your basket and throw the egg into the basket by jump diving right when you're about to hit the corner. And this is really great to do if you have somebody who's right next to your net so they can just grab the egg and throw it into the basket. Another strat you can do while on the ground is to run and shoot the egg through this little cutout. This will take some time to nail down, but here's some things I can tell you. Try to line your character up with the cutout and jump dive right when you're about to approach the cutout. Practice this a few times and you'll be able to do it easily. You can actually jump up and climb the ledge closer to the baskets. Learning to go and chuck eggs out of your opponent's basket is a vital skill to have this map as well as egg scramble. If you have a golden egg, you or someone in your team should go into a corner and hold the egg. Ideally, two people should be defending your eggs. Make sure to keep an eye out on your score and if anything, aim to be second place because the top two teams qualify. Wall guys. As the game progresses, the walls actually start to lower. This map is really simple, especially if you get the variance with the fan blocks or the ramps. When the game is doing its camera sweep at the start, try to find the best path possible. If you get the variance with the fan block, once you get low enough to touch the box, jump and you should get thrusted upwards. Make sure to keep an eye out for people moving blocks because there's often more than one way out. At times, you may have to move a block yourself, don't be afraid to do so. Instead of trying to climb up the box, parkour from one box to another or parkour from the wall onto another box. If you plan your route, this map is very simple. Subscribe. Tundra Run For the middle boxing glove section, you position yourself towards the right side and once the first boxing glove goes back in, that's when you proceed forwards. The third boxing glove has a bit of a delay so be wary of that and you just keep running until you pass all the gloves. All you have to do is hug the wall while holding your joystick upwards and to the right or if you're on keyboard, hold W while holding D and the thick bonkers shouldn't hit you at all, they shouldn't even graze you. To get blown by the fan, you position yourself to the middle or you can use the stripes as reference. You should stand on the third pink stripe from the left and then once you've reached the edge, dive and let the fan blow you forwards. For this uphill section, instead of going in the opposite direction from the fan, run to where the fan will be instead and if you catch it at the start, it should only blow you back to the wall and then you can proceed forwards. Future Izzy here, here's a much faster and better way of doing this section and it doesn't matter where the fan is. Go to whatever direction you want but make your way to the edges. Reason being, the fan doesn't reach all the way to the edges so it won't blow you away regardless if the fan is close to you or not. If you got the variation with the flippers, you can actually get straight flung to the finish line by diving in between two flippers. This still works as of season 6.5 or season 6.3. Freezy Peak This is an incredibly straightforward map. If you spawn on the left side with the boxing gloves, you can actually sidestep the flippers by hugging the wall. The yeetus in this map isn't something that will give you inherently a huge advantage but it is still valuable to learn. Position yourself to where this hot air balloon and small cloud is directly in front of you and once you see the yeetus facing directly downwards, you jump while moving forwards and you should get yeeted. However, another much easier technique is to jump all the way down and once you're about to touch the blades, you jump and you should get thrusted upwards. Once you reach the boxing glove section, you can jump dive over the flippers but do be careful because you could activate the flipper and you could get knocked off. Make sure you have enough momentum before you jump dive. Right when your character is about to touch the pink strip, that's when you start to jump dive. This is very easy to do but the more people do it, the harder it becomes. Snowy crap. I mean snowy scrap. Navigate the snow 
snowball to a punching glove as soon as possible. If you see someone try and go for your snowball, grab them and prevent them from going after your ball. However, if you are the grabber, try and push the opposing team's snowball towards the wall. They will have a hard time trying to get it out. Putting pressure on the other team by stopping the snowball is a valuable skill to have, but please let one person do the grabbing duties. Three people should be moving the snowball. If you have a great lead, maybe one other person can go and put pressure on the other team. Just make sure you get that snowball to the glove ASAP. Because if you're in last place, both teams may target you. However, if you get the variant with the spinner in the middle, do not go to the glove. Try and avoid the center as much as possible. There's also a variant with golden snow in the center. That gives you more points, so scoop them up as soon as possible. And all I can say really is good freaking luck because you will need it. Penguin Pursuit The biggest mistake I see people doing is that they are tunneling on one penguin when there are tons of people doing the same thing as well. This is what causes them to lose. Instead, try and find another group that has less people surrounding them and try to take their penguin. There are three penguins in this map. Don't just try and lust over one. Always be on the lookout. Turn around. Jump over people. Use the walls as a way to get away from people and just generally be nimble. If a team member has a penguin, be their bodyguard and make sure no one gets near them. Grab would-be players who try to steal your teammates' penguins. The technique I'm about to mention could be patched or is already patched. If you go to a fan and just stay there, no one can steal your penguin. It's near impossible to grab them. I would recommend not relying on this and just learn to juke others and use the environment around you to your advantage. If you do see a golden penguin, that is worth double points, so definitely try and prioritize getting a golden penguin. Ski fall. Depending on the variants, there are ways to qualify fast. If you get the normal variant, go on the sides and drop down until you get to the end and use the fan to blow you to the smallest basket, which is worth 5 points. And do that 2 other times until you qualify. This is the best way to qualify. If there is something blocking the side like a bollard or flipper and you have to take the regular way or you want to take the regular way if a ring is right in front of you instead of jump diving and risk the chances of ragdolling instead just dive you won't ragdoll and you can get up faster if you get the boxing glove variant stand on top of the glove and jump right when the glove is about to shoot up and you'll be shot up sky high and you can get a ring or jump over the entire thing snowball survival depending on the variation this map is either dead simple or really difficult for the variant where every other tile is an ice style or more commonly known as the more tiles variant staying in the edges is your best bet to surviving on this map if you do get the saved center variation that's a different story however keep your eye out on the snowball and if it moves close to you still stay on the edges but move to another section by jump diving over the ice tiles really only move to another side when you can be sure it's safe to do so while you can run on the ice tiles which will get more people knocked out but that also includes you so really be careful when doing this because you and everyone else will have a less chance of surviving However, it is a great strategy to use during any variant, excluding the more tiles variant. Panning your camera to check for spots and to know where the snowball is key to surviving on this map. And being able to read or predict where the snowball goes is a good skill to have as well. A strategy that is kind of useful is that you jump on the wall and just run on it. If you dare properly, you should just be on the edge of the glass running. However, you can slip off while doing this and players can destroy the tiles underneath you. So while this strat is decent, I don't recommend it as much of a late game strat but in the early game it's all right roll off in the early game try to stay away from people as much as possible while grabbing and pushing others have been severely nerfed and it's much harder to do but it is still possible to do as of season 6.5 or season 6.3 all you have to do is grab them and when the gap comes towards them let go and they should fall down panning your camera while you're moving is critical especially during the later part of the game learning the patterns and how the rings move is something that will take a lot of time and failures but here Here's some things I can tell you. In late game, whenever you see three rings or three little gaps you have to jump over, the fourth ring usually has a wall. When you see the wall, move on to the other side, make sure you're constantly moving your camera and yourself. If you see that a ring takes a long time to appear, get ready to go to the other side because a ring with a wall is about to appear. Thin ice. You can try and create murder holes or potholes in the floor for unsuspecting players to fall into. And as of season 6.5, you can stand on three tiles and create massive holes for people to fall into. Try and see where large groups of people are going and see if you can avoid them by going to the opposite direction or into a little corner or a little island where people won't suspect you're doing anything. Do know that people will try and go where you are so always be on the move by sprint jumping or running while jumping. Hand your camera to see possible locations of places you can be. Being nimble and quick thinking will get you the win on this map. This could be heavily nerfed in the future but you can jump multiple times on one tile usually three to five times depending on how fast you actually press your jump button. I 
cannot state the importance of this. Do not be near the edges. Some people will try and shove you into the slime. While grabbing has been nerfed a little, it's still possible to do so. This is a bit of a risky strategy, but you can get rid of people by being on the same tile as them and grab them as the tile is cracking and then jump away. You could die doing this, but it is an option. Make sure you're not staying in one place for too long because people will try and cut you off from the rest of the tiles. Also, make sure to always be hopping on one tile to try and preserve it as much as possible. Parkouring and jumping on tiles that are spread apart while people quickly think on your feet is very underrated in my opinion. Being on a small island all by yourself is sometimes better than being on a big island with lots of people. Skyline Stumble Instead of jumping onto the first block, you can actually just dive onto it and then jump on the rest like normal. If you happen to get the Blizzard fan variant at the start, make your way to the fan and just jump into the gust of wind. You can actually jump dive from the sides and get on the bridge directly. Just align yourself to where the bridge is right in front of you and then jump. You can use the edge of this arrow here as a reference. And if you don't quite make the jump dive, you can actually grab and climb up. Also, if this particular laser hurdle is down, you can just walk directly underneath it. If you're taking the Yidus on the right, jump when the Yidus has reached the 3 o'clock range. And as for the Yidus on the left, jump when that Yidus reaches the 9 o'clock position. Instead of taking the conveyor belts, jump right before the flipper is about to flip and you could skip the middle set of flippers or maybe just get boosted to the very top. Big shots. Just stand in between the cannons and that's literally it. Hoverboard Heroes If you get the Blizzard fan variant, when the fan is about to approach you, run towards the fan. The further you are from the fan, the more likely it is to blow you away. If you get the cannons instead, just stand near the right side of the board and you'll be fine. And once you reach the first mini island section, you don't have to jump dive on top of the platform, you can just directly run and jump. And once you approach this rainbow arch section, jump on top of the rainbow arch, let go of your movement stick for a split second and then jump onto the platform. And as for the final section, if you get the thick bonkers or the laser hurdles that move left to right, stand on the very edge of the board because if you do, they won't be able to hit you at all. Do be careful because people could push you off the board. Basketfall. You can score from the rainbow bridge. Just run to the bridge, dive, and let go of the ball, and the ball should go right in. Another way of scoring from afar is to run up to this hill and do the same thing. If you do dunk the ball in, dive right before you're about to hit the floor so you don't ragdoll. Don't try to fight for a golden ball if too many people are going for it. Move on to another ball. If you do happen to have a ball and someone is trying to grab you, jump dive and let go of the ball so you can throw it far away from them. Short circuit. To do the disc with the laser hurdle section, go underneath it and then jump through the second gap the laser hurdles make and finally dive under the hurdle. The momentum from the discs will make this easy to do. If you do happen to get the rotating wall variant, jump through the first wall then get on the walkway and then get on the discs to your right. If you see that a force field gate is up, run to it and by the time you get there, it will go down. Also the opposite is true. If you run to an area that's open, by the time you get there, the force field gate will open. Button bashers. Panning your camera is super important in this map. Being aware where the button is is critical in winning this map. Follow behind someone but don't go to the button. Let them have the point and check behind you. That's a guaranteed point almost. While in the low gravity section, jump and then cut your airtime by diving right on top of the button. Another pro strat is when the bridge is on, jump in the low grav zone, land on the bridge and then immediately dive so you can get the point. And as for the middle button, hug the pillar and then jump. And right when you get an eye level of the button, dive so you hit the button. Grab somebody if they're close to the button so they stumble and then proceed to steal the point from them. Power trip. Honestly, if you learn how to steal the other team's battery and keep them from getting it, this is an effective way of playing because the other team has one less cell while your team has one extra cell. A technique that is effective is to drop the cell if someone is about to grab you and then proceed to pick it up. This is called the drop and pick strat and it works wonderfully in this map. Try turning around and jumping over people or throwing a cell over their head. Use the environment around you to bob and weave and don't neglect the spawn areas. You can get a free 25 points almost. Roll on. In order to avoid getting hit by the hammers and gloves, run along the very edges of the rings. They can't reach you if you do that. Also try to jump dive across large gaps. You can even jump dive and land on this small strip of land. Slime scraper. Most of you would make your way to this flipper and then jump dive onto the bridge. However, did you know you can just jump on top of the railing, meaning you don't even have to wait for the bridge to be activated. If you can't do the flipper strat because too many people are on it, you can still be in front of the pack. Just make your way to this flipper and then jump dive on top of it. And once you get on top of it, if you see the right side bridges are activated, cross the bridge and then make your way to the left side. Because by the time you'll get there, the left side will be activated. You can jump directly on the railing and walk along it. As of season 6.5, they slowed down the speed in which the hurdle moves, making it easier to do the laser hurdle skip. Here's 
knows how to do it. Stand around here and be directly in front of this black ball. And right when the black ball is about to hit you, jump and you should be thrusted forwards. What causes people to fail Yidus is that they don't look at where the Yidus is when they go for it. Once you see the front of the Yidus and it starts to go to the 12 o'clock position, that's when you jump dive towards it. Also, make sure you're jump diving. Most people just jump and they fail that way. I usually run in a straight line and then jump dive towards it. To get the best optimal time on this section, you jump on the treadmill right when this glove is going back down. You then run for two seconds and then sprint jump or run while jumping. You should be able to make it past the boxing glove section easily. However, if you see the last boxing glove fully extended, then the middle glove will extend as well and you could get hit. If you're getting value out of this video, consider subscribing. Once you get past the last boxing glove, turn around and when the glove is fully extended, get on top of it, run forwards and then jump towards the wall. This is still possible to do as of season 6.5. If you get the variant with the donuts instead of the laser hurdles, this is what you can do. Try to get in between two stripes and try to get in front of a donut and the donut should be chasing you almost. And with any luck, once the donut hits you, it should thrust you forwards. To beat grabbers who camp on the treadmills, get on the same treadmill as them and then proceed to hug the wall, kind of like this. Once your character has hit the donut, you can even let go of your joystick or movement key and you won't fall. This is guaranteed to work 100% of the time, by the way. The best way I found to getting yeeted consistently is to not stand super close to the flipper, but rather be at the very end of the flipper and jump right when it's about to hit you. If the flippers in the middle are in the resting position or like this, that's when the flippers will hit you. However, if you don't want to get yeeted, you can instead run on the hill and then jump on top of the middle flippers and run across it. This is much faster than just trying to climb the hill and much more consistent than trying to get yeeted. Lost Temple. Season 6.5 patched out the dive door strat, which if done correctly could thrust you forwards. However, now you don't trip whenever you hit the divot or the edge of the door. Letting other people go and test out doors is the key to winning on this map. But never be too far back, otherwise you'll be behind and could lose. Rooms will split into two paths. The second path will eventually connect to the first path. So if you found the second path, which the second path is often found on the edge rooms, such as this one right here. Just know that you will connect back to the first path eventually. Sometimes it'll be instantly and sometimes you'll have to go on a long journey. And once you get used to that fact, you can then predict where the next door will be. While door patterns can change, here's what I found for some of my games. What I found is, is that the game will sometimes take you on a long path rather than a short path. So sometimes you'll have to cut through the middle even though you're in the edge rooms. They made it so it's more RNG and not as straightforward. If you get a middle door on the first row, the next door on the second row will be a middle door too. And when you reach the second last row, from what I found is that the path will take you to the middle most of the time. So if you're on an edge room, the door to the left or right could be the correct one and that you'll always connect back to the last room before the crown. Right when you're about to reach the crown room, jump on the first pad and then dive when you're about to reach the big pad. Or if you're feeling risky, you can try double diving. Right when you're about to reach the end of the conveyor belt, dive. Dive on the small lily pad and then dive cancel onto the big lily pad. I personally recommend you jump on the small pad and then dive onto the big pad for the middle ground of speed and technique. Tree top tumble. You can tell which the direction this disc is going to be spinning just by looking on the bottom arrow. So if the arrow is pointed to the right, it's going to spin right no matter the variant. Well, unless you get the lily pads, then just jump dive and then immediately dive onto the next one to get to the pad fast. When you get on the first disc, run along it and gain some momentum and then jump dive onto the third disc, skipping the middle disc entirely. And right when you reach the lily pad section, jump and then dive. And right when your character has hit a pad, dive to cancel the animation of you floating in midair. This is called dive canceling. And once you reach this section with a slide, jump on the slide and make your way to this section. You'll want to jump down and dive right when you're about to hit this pad. And while in midair, dive cancel your way to the last pad and aim your character to the extreme left. You should almost hit the fencing. Sprint jump or run while jumping to avoid the rhinos. And right when you're about to reach the fan, jump on top of the fan and right when you hit the fan blades, jump and instead of floating up, you'll be boosted up and you should hear a thud sound. The fastest way to do this section but the hardest way is to dive underneath the king frog. You jump under the pad and then immediately dive or perform a dive cancel and if you did it correctly, you'll go right to the other side. However, let's explore how you can speed run by using the bottom path. Try following the flow of the hammers. Better if the hammers hit you forwards rather than backwards. Also, try to get some distance away from the hammer if possible. It's hard, but it's doable. Just follow in which the direction the hammer is moving towards rather than try to resist it. And as with the section right here, get on this particular ring and try to make your way to the middle ring. And then wait for the frog in front of you to go back down and then make your way forwards. It's all about making it to the middle ring. Once you understand the pattern, you'll know how to do the section easily. The best side to be when you reach the donut section is the right side. So make your way to the right. Let the donuts push you forwards, but only if the outer ring is going clockwise. But otherwise, try to go to the right side anyways. Drop down, dive cancel, go up this fan, and dive under the big green frog. Little Leapers, aka Dive.
dive canceling the map. The best place to be is in the extreme sides. The right to left side is fine. It doesn't matter all that much. Jump onto the first pad and then dive. And make sure you dive cancel on the second pad and then the third pad. This is the fastest way to traverse this section. Make your way to the side platforms. Once you've reached this section, dive in all three pads and then dive your way through this platform section. And now this section is a bit tricky. Dive onto this big pad and dive right when you're about to reach the floor pad. And then if you did it correctly, you should skip the middle floating pad. This is tricky, so don't worry about it too much. In my last video, I mentioned you can dive onto the middle pad directly. Well, you can't. They patched it so it's impossible to do it as of 6.5. If you do, however, get the hard mode variant of Little Leapers, the third section is now this instead of how it used to be. Here's how to do it. Jump dive onto the floor pad and when you reach this pad, hit it but don't dive. Rather, just move your character to the next pad and you should reach the top easily. The key is to not do anything but move your character to the next pad in line. And if you get the sixth floating pad section towards the end, here's how to do it. Wait for the first four pads to join together or to almost touch one another and then jump dive and make your way to the closest of the two pads and then jump dive onto them. It seems easy to say but once you get the hang of it and understand the waiting for the four pads to meet is the key to passing the section easily, you'll be able to do it on the first try. If you do however get the regular side to side pads instead, jump dive onto the floor pad and then dive onto the first pad to the right and when you hit the pad, aim your character to this pad and dive again. It's all about diving fast. Actually, this map is all about diving fast. Master dive cancelling and this map will be your best friend. Stomper grounds. During season 6, the runners have been changed to be far more aggressive than when I made my guide. But the tips in that video still hold well. Pan your camera constantly so that you are aware of your surroundings. Map awareness is critical to surviving on this map. Stay away from groups of people. The rhinos are attracted to large hordes of people and sprint jump or jump while running to get ahead faster. And also the rhinos will be less likely to hit you since you're not in one spot constantly. Try to be on the other side of the map for the rhinos but do be careful of their dash. The more momentum the rhino has, the further it can hit you. So if a rhino hits you with a dash attack but you're close to the rhino, it won't hit you as far. But if the rhino hits you with a dash attack but you are really far away from it, that is a guaranteed knockout. But still, try to avoid the rhino's dash attack by diving away from it. Following the tail of a rhino is a risky play, but if you keep enough distance and keep an eye out for a potential rhino sneak attack, you should be fine. If you get the variant with the disc, this map is so easy. Just stay on the disc and just keep spinning. This can change though, but hanging out on the disc, the rhino really can't hit you that far since you're so close to it. Use the lily pass to stay in the air and dive over a potential rhino. Some fruit. There are three waves in this map. Each wave will increase by one fruit. So wave one will have two fruits, so a 50-50 chance. The second wave is three fruits, so a 33% chance. Why 33? 33 times 3 is 99%. And the third wave with four fruits and a 25% chance. A technique I use often is singing. Singing is the best way to memorize something, but you can just see the fruits out loud or the colors out loud. The other items that aren't fruits are there to distract you. They don't count or will be on the screen, so ignore them. Remember to pan your camera and go to the other side. You may miss a fruit, so check every corner. Bubble trouble. The biggest tip I can give you in this map is to not fight a losing battle. If you're in a zone and can't seem to get a bubble or that everyone is already there before you, do one of two things. Go back to the disc and wait for a new zone to pop up or go to a zone that isn't really populated. Even though it may be a zone that you struggle with, getting three or two bubbles is plenty enough. Get three or four bubbles or however many bubbles you can get and then move on to another zone. You don't have to get all your bubbles in one zone. Just go to a zone, get a couple, move on. To get the golden bubble on the fan section, get on the fan and then jump when you touch the fan blades. You should be straight thrusted in the air, making it easy to get the gold bubble. For the bridge and frog section, jump on the head of the frog while it's small, then right when it's about to puff up, jump and you should be able to get it with ease. The disc with the spinning bar is quite easy to traverse once you figure out that you have to be on the edges of the disc and jump a second before the bar gets to you. Just do a couple laps around the disc with the bar and you'll figure out the timing easily. My bubble trouble guide will show you how to get all the golden bubbles. Penguin pool party. I always take the left side and go down the bridge by bunny hopping or bee hopping. You bee hop by jumping and while in midair, keep mashing your jump button and keep mashing until you land down. Bee hopping is so advantageous when going down slopes and downward facing ramps. If you're close to the slide, you can take that too, but I prefer going down the slope even if I'm far away from it. That allows me time to scope out the area and see if I can find a penguin that's by itself rather than trying to steal from someone. If you can't find a penguin by itself on the bottom floor, I recommend you go up and see if you can find a penguin that's alone. You can sometimes find penguins next to the slides since that's where people stand and drop the penguins when they're done. By the way, the penguins can run up the slide, so be wary of that. If you have someone chasing you, try turning around and jumping over them or using the obstacles around you to juke them. You can even try dropping the penguin for a brief second and picking it up again. Learning to be patient will help you go a long way to qualify on this map. If you're on the seesaw with this treadmill to your left, the seesaw will always tilt to the left side. And if you're on the seesaw with this drum to your right, the seesaw is always going to tilt to the right side. This is constant and doesn't change.
change but it can change with an update but as of season 6.5 this is the case here are the different ways you can qualify on airtime the middle section seems difficult but it's easy once you understand where to position yourself and when to jump die use a trapeze to lunge yourself towards a tile that has passed a boxing glove or to a tile that isn't close to a glove try and position yourself where you have enough space to run forwards and move slowly and stop for a second or two then if the tile in front of you has passed a boxing glove that's when you run towards it and then jump tie move very slowly and try to hang back until you see an opening really it's all about making sure the tile in front of you has passed a glove and having a bit of a running start before you jump dive for this section what you want to do is stand on the bottom half or the half that's far from the fan and if a bunch of people stand on that section or near it it will tilt towards the fan shielding you from the gust of wind if you've fallen down you can use the flippers to flip yourself back up this is especially useful for when you're doing the seesaw strat because the flippers are very close to the seesaws you can also use this to get back on top of the 360 degree seesaws this map is great because of the ways you can qualify every run you can qualify a different way although the seesaw strat is by far the quickest way to qualify taking the high ground and having a bird's eye view of where the light is going to be something everyone should do especially if you spawn near the button always check your surroundings and take the high ground when a light is about to hit a block use the spinning discs to launch yourself towards the light positioning and patience are vital to winning on this map the light will go forwards for a few seconds and go in a completely different direction always be aware that the light may change directions any second use the fan in the middle to float yourself to high ground and dive right before you land so that you don't stumble and ragdoll and can move fast when you reach the slime fall section position your camera to the top left and you should be able to see the floor below you make your way to the wall and keep mashing your jump button until you land and if you did it properly you should be straight thrusted forwards a more guaranteed but slower way of doing this section is to dive headfirst into the wall these days i never take the trapeze instead i go straight and make my way to the disc and from there i run and then jump dive directly onto the platform this is slightly faster than getting back on top of the pipe a tip i can give you is to line yourself up to the very edge and dive later rather than early it's possible to do this from both sides while you're making your way down from the final hilly section if you jump on top of this bumper you can actually jump over a road rotating wall the timing is incredibly tricky because you have to jump the instant you land on the bumper not sure what the practicality of this tip is but it's still incredibly cool to know you can avoid the boxing up section entirely by jump diving onto the bumpers you can also jump on the bumpers but jump diving is the easiest and by far the most consistent way of doing the section at the beginning you can take two sides the right has blizzard fans and flippers while the left side has water balloons with bumpers for the right side once you're about to land down i recommend you dive so that you land smoothly and don't risk the chance of ragdolling since the fans float up from left to right make your way to the right side because by the time you'll get there the fan will be floating upward try to predict where the fan will go instead of running to an area that's empty when asked for the left side you can skip the first set of bumpers by diving when you're about to land and once a bumper reaches a side you then can cross a section this section is much easier than the blizzard fan section by far both the left and right side will have this zone you can skip the first set of hammers by diving once you're starting to fall you then jump dive on the drums and make your way almost like you're playing lily leapers like all the other zones mentioned previously you can skip the first row by diving over the section but at times you just won't have the momentum to do so if you see a balloon that's down and you're quite far away by the time you'll get there it will puff back up so try and go for balloons that are activated or puffed up and then once they're down you can cross easily try and go to the middle and jump on the head of the baton or this thing right here this is by far the easiest way to get over this zone just cross a first set of donuts and it should be dead simple nothing much to it really for this zone you can jump dive directly on the seesaw so you never have to land on the floor just run a little bit and then jump dive to lunge yourself towards the seesaw if while in the air you see the seesaw on one side run to the other side and by the time you'll reach there the seesaw will already be tilted to the side that you're on this is the safest way to go about this section but you could just jump dive on the seesaw right when you immediately land on the floor while in the air make sure to dive so that you land smoothly and are able to move right away if you get on the seesaw right away or right when you land i recommend you run to the other side because the seesaw could flip to the other way so we feel like the seesaw is about to flip while you're on it just move to the other side just to be safe it's all about anticipating the seesaw and acting accordingly in order to get on the trapeze you jump towards it and while in midair hold your grab button and you'll latch onto it once you're on the trapeze you let go of your grab button and then dive if you let go of your grab key you'll pop yourself to the finish line i don't recommend you take this path it's slow and the water balloon could knock you off instead so go to the top of the ramp and then jump dive into the pipe you could do it either side this is nearly foolproof but it's not as fast
fast to take the trapeze. This is also great for when you reach the hill, but the trapeze is away from you. If you're spawned in the front, the middle path is by far the fastest way. However, if you're spawned in the back, too many people will be on the middle path by the time you get there. So I recommend you take the side path instead. Jump on top of the fence and then jump dive to the drum. I recommend you dive once you've hit the drum to cancel the floating animation and so that you land on the disc fast. To do the final section fast, jump dive on the first drum and then make your way to the second drum. Use the bollards or donuts to push yourself forwards. The number one tip I can give you for Sweet Thieves is to parkour and parkour often. The way the map has been laid out and developed is to encourage people to parkour. Here are some advanced techniques that pros use. Jump and then stand on top of the pink fence and go invisible. No guardians ever expect thieves to do this. Once the button can be pressed, you then jump dive on top of the button. Speaking of the button, they lowered the cooldown of the button from 30 seconds to 20 seconds. This gives thieves more chances to free their teammates. However, even with the cooldown reduction, I still recommend you do this if you're a guardian. Go and press a button at the very start of the match so that the thieves are unable to press a button for 20 seconds. Do note that the gate will close 5 seconds after you press a button, so be aware of that. A technique I recommend people practice when Sweet Thieves comes around is the throw and pick strat. To do the throw and pick strat, while you're holding a candy, you just throw it in front of you and then grab the candy and just keep doing that over and over again. The reason you would do this is because you move faster when you're not holding an object. By doing this, you get the candy to the basket faster. Knowing which blocks you can jump on top of while holding a candy is incredibly important. You can jump on this rectangular block if you're holding a candy. However, you can't jump up these blocks if you have a candy on hand. Once a thief has dropped a candy, guardians are able to kick the candy. So try to kick all the candies to one side so that you only really need one guardian to defend it. Also, if you're in the water stage zone, try to kick the candy onto this corner right here. And if you're in the box zone, kick the candy to this corner and use a box to cover it up. They won't be able to get it from the front and if they do try to go for it, you can easily catch them. This is something I don't see enough guardians doing. Guardians will usually ignore the goal or the basket zone and they will just let candies go in. You can just camp on the basket zone and just kick whatever candies you see approaching the goal. But do be careful because you could potentially kick a candy into the goal. So try to kick a candy into a flat area and not near the basket because the basket is naturally curved so candies will be more likely to go in. This can definitely be useful towards the tail end of a Sweet Thieves game and could potentially be the difference between you winning a game or losing a game.